11.16am on the clock, it's Kong Yu with you on Tracks Momentum's first interview of the day. Today I'll be speaking about the uh, subject of uh, what youths are doing to uh, affect climate change or rather to understand more about it uh, as well as a special a youth conference which is happening uh, in relation to this also but first of all welcoming into the studio my three special guests making a very happening party uh, this hour of the show uh, first up Jolene Tan welcome um, speaking also to Nurul Nabila Shohimi and also to Jess Ibrahim Izaidin, uh, Jess Isman, uh, who are the committee members from a group that's called PowerShift Malaysia, right? Hi, how are you all? Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, and uh, tell us a bit about uh, the organization that you guys are from. Is it new? Uh, it's called PowerShift Malaysia. It's got a very uh, interesting name. Uh, tell us more about that. Um, basically, PowerShift Malaysia is um, an organization a group uh, where we gather youths and various um, people who know about the topic on climate change, bring them together and discuss and exchange of ideas and um, as well as uh, getting the facts on climate change into a wider audience, especially to the youth. Um, it started actually under a, a global movement called Global Power Shift, which uh, started in Istanbul in 2013. And the same year, um, uh, when participants who from Malaysia who attended that uh, summit came back uh, to Malaysia, they formed um, Power Shift Malaysia, which is under uh, Mr. Adrian, Adrian okay. Yo. Mm -hmm. And so Power Shift um, Malaysia is a platform for where, as Malaysian youth, how can we get to know about the issues on climate change mm -hmm. and how, as youth, we can empower ourselves to engage more with with the public and, and in order to combat it too. okay and this is a power shift malaysia we're talking about uh, it takes a cue from global power shift and is it the same type of uh movement or agenda behind it from the global perspective is it's also literally powered by youth as well yes okay all right so this is pretty much like the malaysian chapter of things right yeah okay and you talk about youth i mean how does it work uh of course the emphasis is on uh, empowering and uh, educating and also uh, I guess empowering would probably be a better word, yeah? Uh, younger people uh, to be more uh, conscious about what's happening with the environment as well as what, uh, how we all affect it and what we can do to hopefully improve it. Uh, it it's largely like that or is there, is there more to it? Uh, Nabila, maybe you can share with us a little bit. Uh, it's more to uh, empowering youth, mm -hmm. but we do uh, focus on public. But you see, youth, we are like the future leaders of Malaysia and also the world. Okay. So basically, like, if you join Power Shift, there will be like workshops. Mm -hmm. And also, these workshops, they focus on like uh, digital campaigning and also policy and government. Mm -hmm. And uh, media literacy, all this kind of creative campaigning. So basically, when they go through these workshops, they learn all these techniques. And if they are interested to fight for the environment and conduct their own their own projects, any campaigns, that's where the skills, you know, that's where they get their skills from PowerShift Malaysia. All right. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's a lot of to do with education. Yes. Uh, and, and how to how to do things, isn't it? Yes. yes. And speaking of uh, the uh, PowerShift movement, the global PowerShift, uh, uh, PowerShift Malaysia, uh, when it comes to the, the uh, programs or when it comes to um, uh, th other details like that, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm curious myself uh, because I'm just at the brink, I think, of the upper end range of what is categorized as youth. Uh, how do you? How does it work? I mean, like, is it open for anyone, or is there really uh, an age limit? Whether it's a, a lower age limit or upper age limit. Well, um, <laughs> under the United Nations, the um, uh, age range for youth is okay. from fifteen to twenty-five to to some would say to thirty. Thirty, right? Um, those are categorized as youth, but okay. um, however we. Uh, like Nabila said, as um, apart from youth, we also try to um, get the um, the awareness on climate change to the public as well, not just to a certain group of people. But we do want to empower youth um, because we mm -hmm. feel that um, in the future we we are also responsible to try to um, handle um, the situation if climate change does affect. At least the youth are prepared. And this is a, a way to educate them on, on the things they could do on a local level. I see. That's why Power Shift Malaysia is more focused to how Malaysian youth 
can um, be, be prepared in uh, spreading awareness on climate change and mm-hmm. how um, hopefully to prevent it and to get the public as well um, to maybe uh, shift to a more sustainable uh, lifestyle mm-hmm. to ensure that um, you know uh, no further problems <laughs> caused by climate change can affect right and yeah. we'll, we'll save that to the next segment uh, as yeah. well as of course a conference that's happening uh, right now now we talk about uh, you guys uh, per se uh, and I always wonder is it like a chicken egg or egg chicken sort of a thing is it a certain type uh, regardless of age yeah, uh, that gets drawn to these issues and then uh, more uh, how shall we say aware of these issues including climate change uh, or is it the other way around is it is it more like a through awareness education that you get people who are, are not too much into it at the moment uh, who maybe seemingly don't care too much about the environment things like that uh, learning finding out more, more information and then becoming uh, supportive of causes uh, like power shift malaysia what do you what do you feel uh, and maybe a, a little bit of your background would help i mean i'm also speaking to jolene tan who uh, was once in the studio actually uh, as an intern correct Yes. <laughs> okay, and uh, you were uh, at that time. I think you were attached to Eco Nights. Yes, that was right. Uh, and uh, how did uh, well, tell us a bit? Uh, remind us a bit about your background. Uh, it is along these lines, isn't it? Climate change, environment, and all that. Um. So basically, in the beginning, I actually studied environmental science, as uh, because it's our curiosity, as I mentioned it before. And in addition, I was participating in beauty pageants like Miss Malaysia Earth is also bringing awareness about environment. Mm. I am doing, I don't know, I think chicken and or egg and something like that. I think it's more like, it's like a both way thing. I see things in a much more holistic way. Sometimes people are curious about something, that's why they can tend to discover. Or it's just like, you know, they know something about it, they just decided they have to make a change. So I just think that it's just like a both way thing. Mm. So that applies to me. Right. And and for you, it, it was certainly that case yeah, where uh, the more you learned about it, the more uh, I'm sure you became more passionate about it as well. Mm, I think it's more like a making a conscious decision on how to make the my living environment into much more sustainable and conducive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what about you, Jess? What is your background and what have you seen uh, on this note? I mean, is it the uh, certain type of person that becomes passionate about these issues, or is it the other way around? Um, I think uh, it it applies to both, as Julian mentioned. But for me myself, I started uh, participating in environmental or. Um, causes and programs since I was nine mm-hmm. uh, um, with uh, various NGOs uh, such as uh, yeah, Sanawar Sanalam and Tree Theatre Group and from then I my knowledge on environmental issues were very very limited but it's through um, participating in these programs where I learn more and I think that's important as well for people first of all of course you must have that interest that wanting to know about the issue Mm -hmm. but it's also when during that experience when you learn um, you get the information that you need and that helps your knowledge to grow and hopefully they'll help you to do more and yeah I uh, you don't necessarily need to be someone who's uh, an expert on environment to participate if you feel that this is an issue that you think is important Mm -hmm. just for you know wanting to know more about it that's a good start as well so that's yeah. great yeah and what about you nabila uh, how did you get involved and also uh, how do you think the uh, peers your peers are actually taking to uh, the cause basically uh, i got involved because of my interests in all these environmental issues i'm actually studying environmental biology mm-hmm. and uh, that's where Hmm, it's the way I got involved in all this uh, movement, okay. all this volunteering. Right. And from my observation, um, my peers are not really alert, they're not really aware about what's happening with the climate. Mm. And when I got them in and then they were like, oh, so this is very interesting, this is something that we need to do because it's our future, it's going to affect our future and we need to lead the movement and come up with a few solutions and get everyone together to solve this climate change, at mm-hmm. least like reduce the effect right. in future. Now, um, it's interesting that you actually did, uh, you are pretty much making a generalization that you've observed yourself, which is uh, your peers 
uh, I guess friends of yours maybe at, on a whole in general are not that uh, too aware of uh, environmental issues and all that that concern them uh, can I ask how old are you? I'm 23 <laughs> okay all right very very young lady uh, and do you see that that's I mean like for me in my perspective I'm much older than you guys uh, I certainly see that that as a generalization but maybe because you know my peers aren't in their uh, early 20s like you guys how do you get people to get off of their say you know um, endless selfies on the Instagram you know things like that that you see a lot uh, in youth culture again I'm just making generalizations here uh, to something that is somewhat universal or, or, or uh, in the very least national I mean like talk about Malaysia and climate change for example how do you shift that focus and what does it take it takes that certain awareness but where do you think it comes from like for you where does where did it come from for as in for my age people my age yeah are you on um, some examples you have seen what sparked the interest basically um, okay for example mm -hmm. like nowadays okay back in the olden days malaysia is not as hot as these days we have a lot people, more trees yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and it's like now like i realize my peers or i would say some of my lecturers who are actually you know the older generations one generation would, before yeah me. one generation yeah. before me they mm -hmm. would tell us like oh back in the olden days it's really cold now it's really hot and why is it very hot so that actually caught our attention and we actually can relate when we do our research on internet and we relate it to climate change oh so it's climate change global warming is part of climate change mm -hmm. and it's happening the problem is like nobody realized it nobody not they realize it's the temperatures uh, is increasing but right. they can't relate it to climate change yet yeah or, or a better question is that what who i mean people youths people in the 20s early 20s like you guys may not bother i mean yeah it's hot so i mean there's no comparison to uh except when maybe a parent you know say like me i remember going back to uh johor uh, when i was in my school days up to when i college days and uh, we uh, in my grandmother's house and it was always cold uh, in the early mornings you need blankets uh, and it was like uh, you, you, when you know you would open your mouth to breathe on some days in the morning you would see that steam coming out of your mouth yeah. of course it doesn't happen anymore i mean this is typical low land standard flat ground you know right. because most of the trees have been cleared jolinia there's something to add on this uh, Go ahead. okay mm -hmm. i think the thing is that no one actually dig deep into learning about the sciences of what's going on for example basically nowadays the earth is getting much more warmer and if you are able to realize that it also causes more frequency of uh, haze pollution you can see it happening almost every year and it's going to affect your lung your health with your family your friends and relatives so this is actually part of the excavated by global warming mm -hmm. and there was another thing is that when the earth is getting much more warmer your surroundings getting more warmer it actually affects how you how you make your decision i mean your decision making like people tend to make um simple decision making and uh, rather than complex uh decision makings they are not able to think things in a much more critical way i see and it actually affects you and apparently part based on the past research it actually affects um, whenever the earth is getting much more warmer and those people who couldn't adapt to it it tends to actually cause a national economic loss oh really wow. so yeah it actually pretty much affect in this way it's just people do not realize that when economic loss it could talk in terms of uh, com energy consumption and also poor decision making on certain things you tend to buy things in a much more Irrational impulsive, way. Impulsive yeah, way. irrational if way. If the temperature's hotter, if the temperature's uh, hotter. it's getting warmer. I mean, those people who born in like tropical, of course, you can adapt to it. Right. But as time passes by, we predict that it's going to be warmer. So it tends to get warmer, and I don't know how it's going to affect us, but it's definitely going to affect us in some way. Mm. Yeah. There are yeah. some examples of how, because I think the issue about climate change is that it's quite generalized. That you um, you mentioned, I think, are quite general in, in a sense where when people think about climate change they, th they think more about the melting ice caps mm. and these are things that we keep hearing over the years but I think for people here they don't really understand uh, or really know about the effects directly to us and how it relates to M Malaysians mm. and, and Malaysian youths right in, yes in, in your uh, so, context so there are some examples of actually how climate change um, can uh, affect people here like that not necessarily you know related to rising sea levels but also more to how it affects communities here okay and nabila has some examples yeah interesting examples i'm sure you guys have examples to share but let's uh, take a quick break a little bit of a breather
Um, and we'll get back uh, to business with Jolene Tan, Nurul Nabila, as well as Jez Ibrahim right here in a very uh, interesting and lively uh, session. Stay tuned. Keep it right here on Tracks Momentum. Welcome back to Tracks Momentum. It's Kong Yu with you on the show and joined this hour by my three uh, special and lively guests, Jolene Tan, Nurul Nabila, as well as Jez Ibrahim uh, from Powership Malaysia 2015. We're talking about uh, the roles uh, and functions of Powership Malaysia 2015. Um, interesting that there's a date to it, but never mind. Uh, as well as how uh, these three uh, young people will be uh, part of the youth delegates for the Conference of Parties, the COP of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is happening later in the year. We'll find out more details on the convention and what uh, the youth delegates will be up to uh, at the convention at the last segment. But returning back to Powership Malaysia, uh, it's not Powership Malaysia 2015, right? It's yes. generally yes. Powership yes. Malaysia. Uh, talking about uh, youths empowering other people, um, it could be other youths, but also at large, isn't it, in, in general, uh, with um, the Malaysian public uh, on solving climate change issues. And, and what is the role, and uh, earlier on we touched about programs, how-tos, guides, etc., on how to exactly do that. Uh, round that up for us a little bit. Uh, in the whole framework of things, how does uh, PowerShift Malaysia intend to do just that? Okay, PowerShift Malaysia is actually like a platform for young people to engage with each other and together they will push for urgent action in our climate crisis. So like what I mentioned, there's all this workshop and everything. So they will, they can come up with their own projects or they can actually participate in uh, our delegation mm -hmm. to go for all those climate conference and they can voice out their opinions and propose their solutions or projects to world leaders so perhaps like it's sort of like guiding or encouraging the world leaders like pushing them to help us to you know like not to save the world but to solve this climate change mm -hmm. and uh, these youths will get the knowledge on the issues through um, these symposiums and camps which they would attend for example had a power shift 2013 um, and uh, 2014 last year we had it in Penang, Penang. and we had the um, some speakers who knew about the topic to come and explain and give their opinions and and the facts that they do and it's also educating people about the issue and also giving them like Nabla mentioned earlier the tools and the skills on how they can take action mm -hmm. okay yeah. well, well great stuff yeah um and how do you encourage uh the people or youths people your age your peers to join you guys is by word of mouth or attending the camps we're talking about uh, is it uh, multifaceted from different different ways? Different ways, like <laughs> for example, uh, for myself, how I got into PowerShift is more like a senior. He just like uh, tagged me along, like asked me to join and help him with uh, organizing PowerShift Malaysia 2014. So I just tagged along and I also drag other friends, and then you know we are exposed to all this knowledge, new knowledge, and we got interested. Other ways is that uh, we also work with other NGOs. For example, recently we uh, we spoke to Eco Nights and So Mango and we told them about our aim of Power Shift and uh, they are also interested to help us out because we are actually working for the same cause. Mm -hmm. So through this networking you know, between NGOs and hopefully with uh, the governmental sectors, we can actually like together we like spread this message around to the public. Mm -hmm. For the youths who are interested to join Power Shift, um, they can go to the website powershiftmalaysia.org.my and uh, there, um, over there they can see the programs that, that um, we'll be conducting and if they're interested they could register or want to contact us it's, it's all there in the website okay good stuff uh, in the previous segment we were uh, I, I posed the question of how do you get uh, use your peers to be more aware of climate issues in the first place um, because generally, I think uh, for many uh, of us, uh, age notwithstanding, yeah, uh, we tend to get caught up in our day-to-day -day lives, like things which are very current, uh, which seemingly seem more important, like taking care of business, taking care of family is, is always a, a great example. Yeah? Uh, they tend to think about, oh, you know, in 50 years' time, this well, et cetera will be like that, or in Malaysia will be uh, maybe three degrees centigrade or Celsius hotter, warmer. It's like 
uh, people may go like, who cares? Or, or not to say they don't care about it, but it's because it's so far in the future, they just don't see the importance of it. I and I would, I would think that it is generally even more difficult to get people in their late teens or early twenties to actually open their eyes in a in their way. Yeah. yeah uh, Nabila, you had a comment to this. Eh? Okay. Uh, maybe in a few years to come, we can actually. Uh, I think. Malaysians, especially youth who will be in their 30s soon, um, they should know about our seafood crisis. Like that, we have our, no more fish. Yeah, yes. fish is. Uh, in fact, like some, uh, there are some researchers who predicted that in uh, 2020 or in a few years to come, will be like seafood. There, there won't be any more seafood. Mm-hmm. So this is something that we need to look at, especially like people my age. So. Basically, like, uh, of course, they can't see the connection between uh, like how is climate change going to affect seafood uh, the supply. Maybe not direct. I mean, they could. Uh, they might say like, oh, I always see fish in the supermarket or fish in the market. Yes. So it doesn't look like there's no fish. But truth of the matter, that fish uh, is either fry from our oceans or it's imported or it's uh, freshwater fish. Yes, most of them are like probably through like aquaculture, mm-hmm. all these fish farms. That's right. But. Also, people are like saying that uh, it might. There are some research that say it might not be healthy for us. I mean, like from from fish farms. Mm-hmm. But that's part of the solution. If our seafood, our fresh, the original seafood supply is gone, mm-hmm. but um, we need to think about what about the fishermen who are like living at the coastal, who are relying on this seafood supply, and what about their families? So, pretty sure that the youth of these uh, fishermen families, they will realize that you know the seafood is reducing. So. But they, they can't see the connection between climate change and seafood because basically if climate climate change we have we are talking about global warming and if the temperature of the sea rises that's where the corals will die and we know corals are part of the place where uh, the habitats of the fish where they spawn and everything so once corals are gone their habitats are gone and that's where fish will go down mm. and they will go down mm-hmm. so they don't see those. Yeah, so that's, that's a good example, but the question is then how do you get... That's the problem because you not a lot of people are interested. Like you guys. Yes. Yeah. I think we do... Um, educate them. Ed- yes, exactly. And, do, and this is what Power Shift is about. When they do attend, these informations are the things that are shared. Mm. Um, for example, we most of us did not know about these topics until we actually par- uh, participated in these camps. And Yeah, and neither did I. I'm talking about seafood. I mean, o- o- of yeah. course, overfishing is actually the, the bigger problem at large, yeah. uh, right. besides, you know, the state of coral reefs and all that. I didn't know until I hosted this program. Right. You know? And that's the other thing we're trying to highlight is that uh, because when people talk about climate change, they think to um, globalize and generalize it. Like I mentioned earlier, they, they think about the melting ice caps, which mm. does do affect, but how is it going to affect us directly here in Malaysia? And so one example is the fisheries. That another example is, um, just now Julian mentioned about the haze. A lot of people don't realize that um, with climate change, the um, the cause, the causation of haze would be more, mm-hmm, you know, yeah. and basically um, the peatlands, uh, yes, more prone the to peatlands fire. are more open and exposed yeah. to the heat, and that will um, fuel a more um, burning, and that will cause um, more haze, and that's also one way to look at it, how it will affect. And droughts will also affect farm and uh, farm cu- farming cultures. Mm-hmm. Um, these farmers who basically um, grow our crops, our our rice. In, in the region they might be affected and that will really affect our food supply if if you think think about it that way so we have to direct them their that their focus to how it will affect them and i think that's one of the ways power shift malaysia um through our programs or uh, like um, educate them about about this give them more awareness that's great yeah but you've talked about a little bit more of a general um point general way general method jolene i don't know if you have any ideas how what is, how, how is it uh your peers people your age within the scope of your daily activities how you run your day-to-day lives how do you get their attention how do you get them interested in these issues and pay attention because attention spans are so short these days for all of us how do you get them interested focused and attentive enough to get these messages across to people your age um, for day to day yeah on a day-to-day basis I mean uh, yeah I mean is it 
through social media? I mean, uh, I would maybe that might be one way. I mean, you guys can can chip in as well. Is it through social media? Is it through making it more fun, making it more lively, making it more happening? What? Um, well, I think it's that social media is part of it. So, cause like sometimes I would just like post things on Instagram or Facebook and stuff, and also at the same time, actually, like some of my friends, they are also making like environmental videos mm -hmm. and making it in a much more interactive way and shorter more interactive yes okay. I, because people have like really short span yeah so maybe we try to make something like a one minute or 15 second video i don't know mm. if that is possible it's like a psa <laughs> right yeah so uh nabila you had some thoughts to share on this Speaking, uh, mine would be almost the same as jolene mm -hmm. like uh social media for example facebook i use i usually post up environmental related stuff in uh, Facebook and that's where my friends they got to know more about uh, climate change or any environmental issues so basically they are relying on me do you post links yes I do post links okay. and uh, I wouldn't say that the method is really fast and effective but it's slow but sure mm. so I started posting since let's say about 2010 and now I see that more of my friends are becoming more uh, environmentally aware about what's happening Mm -hmm. and also like videos yeah videos will actually work well and uh Econite is actually like going to do this Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival that's right yeah. and from what I observe they actually like show all these uh, environmentally related videos which are very short but the impact is really strong mm -hmm. and people are like oh yes it's gonna it's happening now they realize like you know it's happening now they you know they get the connection mm -hmm. yeah what about you jazz i mean uh, i know you know you're a singer and you do all that kind of stuff as well uh, and you do sing uh, environmental related songs like you you would you did we'll try to find that clip uh <laughs> see if we can find it uh what what would you say is one one key way one key medium uh, as specific as possible that would uh, you know, get your peers involved and more concerned about climate change issues? Um, well, definitely social media nowadays is the fastest way of information to go around, whether it's through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Um, however, uh, I, I do realize that here in Malaysia, that not a lot of people have access to, say, the internet. And actually, I would say quite a lot of people have more access to the television to our net television networks that um, we have for example like here in R rtm and, and certain cable yes, providers yeah exactly and i think these issues need to be um, highlighted more frequently on these um, networks mm -hmm. because i think more so um, i think more importantly that's the people that who are um, the general public should know about this more mm -hmm. as opposed to just a few people who have access to um, the internet. So uh, it, it's not saying it's going backwards, but it is um, definitely um, putting more emphasis to the already existing um, medias that um, do reach out to these communities. And I think that's one important way that um, to get the message across is, is, is through all means. Interesting so, yeah. uh, comment there. Of course, then the question is the funding and of course the sponsorship to put those programs on, on uh, public TV, right. right? We'll be right back right here on Tracks Momentum with me, Kong Yu. Stay tuned.